the definition of things highly likely to go wrong is what you're about to watch. This dozer, I am pretty sure I have spent equal time underneath this dozer than I have operating it. It might be close, but it's at least close. Now we've gotten a good amount of work done on this lake, or pond you may want to call it. We call it lake because Lake Luria rhymes a lot better than Pond Luria. But we have a lot more work to do in this lake before winter so that we can beat the spring when everything thaws and then would turn this into a big mess. So let's see how many more fixes we have in the dozer and how much more use we can get out of it. So while the dozer sits there, stuck, not working, just outside the lake, thank God, I'm gonna keep busy, try something different as I think of what a solution might be to get this thing running. Wish me just luck. One more clean specimen towel when we get things clean so pulling it with the truck obviously did not work so back into the dozer with Chris so the next thing I've done is the transmission as a filter Voila. the good and bad news is it's really not that dirty I mean it's dirty but it ain't that bad I don't think it's so bad that oil would not go through, not allowing the pump to do its thing. 
So either something is broken, the clutches, anything, gears in the transmission went kaplooey. And I just didn't hear something go kaplooey because the toes are so loud. Or the uh, pump is bad. I think, pretty sure, this is about as far as I'm willing to go. So what we're going to do, so when we put these parts back, we don't introduce any dirt as we'll clean these super good with uh, the old classic brake cleaner because it just does a good job in a simplistic way. All right, that is sanitary. And, uh, I was surprised how easy, figuratively speaking, this came out of the transmission. So that was nice. The way these are designed is really simple and nice, but uh, I guess when they're 20, 30, 40 years old, however old this thing is, things break. We should actually flip a UE on our old clean thing here. Why is nothing even? Oh, I guess I'm gonna get dirty. All right, where do we leave off? Clean in the filter. See all that junk? Well, that was quick. Wonder if I should get the uh, carb cleaner and. I think I will, just to give it one more shot. Be right back. Specimen is clean. Back into the orifice it goes. Well, hey, Miss Kamutsu. How are you? <laughs> Would you like a new filter today? Alright, so I've removed her O-ring. I'm gonna clean that. That's where the fuel, the fuel, the oil filter for the transmission goes. Make sure everything seats real well. Gently clean around where the O-ring goes. Oof. Okay. Lowering back in place. Okay, you stay there. Can I get the parts, please? You can't get dirty. Okay, and then this. We'll go back up into here. Success. Bolt number two. Into the upper region. A little gritty. A little gritty. And the final bolt three into the lower region. Filter change complete. Now for $70 worth of more oil. Oh, yikes. That's five gallons for those of you inquiring minds. Or at least you can all get off my legs so I can get out. I'm getting claustrophobic. Oh, jeez. Mm. 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 Did I forget any parts or pieces? Nope. It's my parts shelf. It's empty. 
That's how I remember stuff. Oh, hey. Nice seeing everybody out here. Did you know the sun is still out? Welcome back. Holy cannoli. Okay. Hey, you know what the cool part is about having a, uh, being organized and having an organized tray? That's the dirt that's inside there. Is your organized tray is magnetic. Oh, hey. So I put all my pieces there, nothing falls off. So I have a question. Yeah. So we're going to put five gallons of oil back in yeah. and start her up. Yeah. And if it's still squeaking, we got then... issues. You'll know immediately. It'll take a little bit to be able to soak the oil up into the pump. So, I mean, we'll give her, we won't just go, oh, we're. Anyway, your question? Yeah. So, if it's still squeaking, we got to remove the pump. Um, if we decide to, oh. that'll be one more night of thinking all night. Because that's all I did last night. And sleep it all. Oh. Just thinking about. But that's how, that's how the brain works. So, we but need all about it. Let's say we do the pump. And then we got to put oil back in again, huh? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> if we go that far. Oh, oh okay. yeah. We might sell her for scraps at this point. Remember last winter when I said, if you're looking for a dozer, I'll make you a deal? Should have bought it last <laughs> winter. I should have done that. Sell her when she's running good. Of course, I would hate for somebody else to end up with a nightmare on their hands, so... What do you do? I wonder if you can take it to the scrap yard and get scrap metal pricing for it. She's heavy. Well, I'd call ahead. Say, hey, if I bring in a They'd probably like take it apart. Do, 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 do. Uh, oh my goodness. I wonder what a scrap guy that would take it apart would sell it for you, to you or buy it from you for it. Anyway, let's pick up all our tools, bring out the oil, put the oil in, let's see what happens. I've got an oil pump. Oh, awesome. It's actually a water pump. It's a uh, marketed to pump water. However, on the all knowing YouTube, I found a guy that does diesel tractor repair, mobile tractor repair. This is what it uses to transfer oil, diesel, and gas. All of it. So you know that, uh, ladies, close your ears. When the wife goes to town with your pickup, your diesel pickup, and puts gas in it, and they have to call somebody to pump the tank. Well, that's the guy that pumps the tank and uses exactly this to pump that gas out of there. I went to the hardware store, and I got those... Hoses you use for your washer and dryer, because I super like the red. This is the right fitting, and I super like this tight fitting here. No, the hose isn't super big, but that's okay. You know what else I did? Lisa's behind the camera, so I'm going to talk to her for a minute because she has no idea. She's been busy with sunflowers. The um, pressure washer or the wand. Oh. The trigger broke on the wand, so yeah. we had to buy a new wand. Well, I took it apart. And I took this and cleaned it up and used this, which will be because this hose does nothing but curl in the wrong direction. So this will go straight into the barrel, suck the oil out. And then there's nothing more frustrating than a hose that doesn't want to do what you want to do. So I have a more flexible, super long hose. So this can actually sit on the ground and I can put oil in the whatever and it's long enough. So we use that. Use the other end of this that had the right, put a little fitting in between to put that long hose in there. Delightfulness. We have changed every oil orifices in the dozer possible. So I just drained the oil out of the engine. I replaced the fill. Oh, you guys see this. You fellas that put the oil filters on like your gorillas. 
I have three different oil wrenches, oil filter wrenches. None of them could get it off. Oh, hey. I even concocted my own oil filter wrench. Still could not get it off. After roughly an hour and a half, two hours, this is what took place. To get this bad boy off. But at the end of the day, we got a new filter on. We cursed the man that put this on. And do you know why I put it on so tight? So you could see the Napa 144, I'm pretty sure, because that stuck right out. Uh -huh. And you would have to really crank it down to get that to go all the way around to see that. Uh -huh. I used a Sharpie. Wrote the same stuff on there. In any case, we're moving on. As Lisa often reminds me, Okay, moving on, dear. So this is the worst invention in the entire universe. It makes such an atrocious mess. It should be illegal. So no more of that. Only nice oil pumps. Here's the other end of that. So the other end of the hose, mm. the little in-between connector, whatever you call it. Gotcha. And I actually got it hot because it was a little big to get in there. So it's actually melted that plastic in there. So it is a good tight fit. And then, you know, the fanciest of all fancy plugs. So you see, nice long hose. Yeah. Nice and flexible. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to take that. And we're going to put it into the... Uh, oil fill hose. Okay, so let's see what we've got so far. So just kind of at the tip, but I know all you old timers are like, you got to check it again. You're right. Just stay calm. Yeah. So just the tip. So we won't worry about putting that all the way in. That's so cool. Okay, let's go. I always end up with my gloves off. Or half and half. Okay. You need your whatever it's called. Socket? Socket. Sorry, I went blank. Perfect fit. There we go. <clears throat> Easy. So then we know we're not cross threading them. This is a big deal. You know what gets me every time? This thing starts as easy as a Honda. It's the best way I can describe it. It's crazy. Of course, watch, now that I said that, now I'm confident, she'll start right away. This old cat is pretty amazing how old engineering works it well. Ready? I'm gonna turn it on, you're gonna hear a little pop with the thing in the back. She can fire right up. See that? A little bit of gas about halfway. After not running for about a week, she purrs. You ever have that warm feeling in your heart? This is it. Don't be offended, camera girl. Doesn't need a key to run all day.
And I believe we're on uh, Under the Dozer with Chris Part 3. Is it Part 3 or Part 4? I forget. For Chris, it's Under the Dozer Part 36. Or probably 32, the way that it goes. Okay, so she's custom fit now. So that'll go on there. So what we're gonna do is make us a mess. Don't you love those little knobbies they put in there? She's exploding already. There we go. Now we're cooking with gasket oil. I guess the fun part will be getting the fingers in there and smooshing it all around to make a full gasket. Out here, we do things different. We do it the way any farmer or rancher does it. You make it happen. So there's that line that has the, uh, the leak somewhere in it. So we washed it, we've scrubbed it, I've sanded it, washed it again. This entire tu tube of high, high heat JB Weld, two layers on that entire pipe, nice and smooth, looks really good. Next thing we're gonna do, just to make sure that it's good, second go around of getting the right tubing let me put my clamps down. So we got the right size tubing. So that oil pipe is going to go right through the middle of here as a second layer. So we're going to wrap that. I've cut it in half or cut it in half. I put a slit in it so I can get it over the pipe. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the ultra black gasket maker. So basically, this is going to be another pipe over the gasket maker in between the JB Weld on top of the pipe. So it shouldn't leak out of the JB Weld, but this and this will be its second layer of protection. And then six hose clamps. One, two, three, four, maybe five. We'll see. But lots of hose clamps to keep it nice and tight. So if a little bit of oil leaks out, the theory is the gasket will hold it in and this will help hold everything tight. Let's see what happens. Beautiful. And then all that's left really is to get the, let's get this straight.
so it's flat. And then we're going to build this up through here. The lake's going to be deeper. But he's got some dirt to move. Super exciting. All right. Back under the dozer we go. So, more good news, bad news. Good news, obviously, we got her running good. That was a relief. I was worried she was going to be stuck there. We're going to have to hire a, another dozer operator to get it out. Oh, there she goes. She ran for uh, a good three days, like a solid three days, like eight hours a day, three days, kind of three days. On that fourth day, she ran for about an hour and then I could feel that transmission starting to get weird again. So before she was stuck in the lake, now that it's deeper, and we had a good three days of digging. I brought her immediately back. Zero hesitation. And as I parked right where we're at right now, the transmission was acting up exactly the same again. So because rinsing the filter out works so good, my hope is it's just super dirty and we can rinse it out again and get another good i don't know three four five days and finish up the work we need to do so we drain it again we'll pull the filter again we'll clean it put everything back together we'll again say a prayer together so thank you for uh <laughs> playing along it helped, and we'll see what happens. Okay, clean parts again. We'll put the uh, filter back in the transmission. Nice and gorgeous clean. Keep it clean, hopefully. And I've cleaned out the gunk, all the junk on the bottom underneath where the filter is, so where it collects there. There we go, get that to seat real good. Make sure we don't have any junk there that would mess up our seal. Perfect. And what I've concluded is that if this works for the second time, then I'm unable to really effectively clean that filter. No dirt. So if it stops again, this time I use twice as much parts cleaner slash brake cleaner and spent a lot more time. And don't tell Lisa, but I borrowed one of her containers from the kitchen. And tried to really do a good job of cleaning that filter. So again, if it, in summary, if she works, then we know that's the problem. If it stops again and has a problem, then we know we're not getting all the really fine, gritty, dirty stuff out of the filter. We'll get a new filter, we'll put that in, and then uh, that should be good because it's gone through. This will be the second filter cleanse in so much oil. I was tempted to put the same oil back in, but it's got a little bit of dirt in it. It doesn't look too bad. But why introduce more problems? Our goal here is to reduce problems. 
So, not very often, or if ever, being lazy, taking shortcuts just never works. It's always tempting, but it just never works. All right, they don't need to be too tight. I think that's what we gain with age, right? Wisdom, is that what they say? Experience, because we've tried all the shortcuts, and although we were told the first time, it doesn't work. <laughs> we try it anyway. Should have brought my extension for this one. Oh, it doesn't go too far. Okay, right to spec. And then our last one, which I kept separate on this side. Because I don't think it's different, but just in case. I want everything going back in the same, same place it came from. Where are you? There you are. We'll see what happens here. Okay, greased up, gassed up, and oiled up. Let's see what she does. I always forget that. Okay, give her a little gas. It's like magic every time. Okay, I turned it off so you guys could hear me. I'm hoping you bring me good luck. Please. Oh, it's this. Okay, so we're going to give her a little bit of gas. We're going to give her a little bit of key. 